Um, the intro was really good and, and exactly right. Weka is a high performance storage solution designed specifically for the type of workloads that we see in scientific and technical computing. And more recently, we see obviously GPUs accelerating a lot of um, scientific and technical computing applications and also more machine learning and deep learning methods being applied in the, the, the HPC space or the technical computing space. Weka is absolutely one of the solutions that can address the data storage challenges there. And in fact, we are a much more modern solution designed for the type of network speeds that people are using these days, designed for, designed for the type of accelerated compute nodes that are being used in these markets. So it's a pleasure today to talk about how to unleash your data for modern HPC and AI with the Weka data platform. I'll start off with just a, a couple of slides that, that one that talks about who Weka is, just so we know who we are as an organization and another one that talks about who our typical customers are and what type of industries and use cases is Weka already accelerating uh, data in. And then we'll jump into the technical side of the presentation. Um, some of you might be used to um, HPC storage solutions and the vernacular that we use. For others, it might be it might be more newer. If anyone's got any questions, please don't hesitate to raise a hand or or shout out and we'll do our best to take any questions as we go through. Or if you want to keep your questions until the end, that's fine as well. I'm pretty sure we'll have some time for for questions at the end. OK, so let me do a quick one slide intro to Weka and who we are as a company. Weka is actually 10 years old this year. We were founded in 2014, our headquarters in Silicon Valley, California. Our product is a software defined high performance parallel file system that was built for HPC and AI workloads. We've already got hundreds of customers worldwide, including eight of the Fortune 50 companies in the USA. I think seven of the top 10 global pharmaceutical companies are using Weka. In terms of um, large manufacturing companies, the world's largest smartphone manufacturer, the world's largest semiconductor manufacturer, and oil and gas, the world's largest oil and gas company. Um, and we're also doing extremely well in other areas that I'll touch on in the next slide. The Weka data platform, which is what we call the product, is our own technology. So we've had 69 patents granted, we've got 75 pending. And for the last three years in a row, we've been recognized by Gartner on their magic quadrant for file and object storage as a visionary. WEC is also backed by extremely large industry leaders. So NVIDIA is one of our investors. Mellanox, before they were acquired by NVIDIA, invested in Weka, and you can see some of our other investors on, on this slide here. Very well backed, very successful, growing at about two to three X uh, year on year, um, serving lots of customers that are doing very challenging workloads like yourselves. This is just a look at the type of industries and use cases that we've been having success in so far. So I'll just touch very briefly on some of them and I'll, I'll, I'll dive a little bit more into the public space because academia public research is, is more aligned to the audience on this call. But in the finance space, we have customers that are doing everything from algorithmic, algorithmic trading to fraud, fraud and risk analytics. Um, we're starting to see some Gen AI there. Um, one of our customers uh, has, a, has over 20,000 GPUs that they're using for algorithmic trading, and they use the Weka data platform to feed those GPUs and keep them busier with data than any other data storage solution um, could do. In the life sciences space, as I mentioned, we're in seven of the top global pharmaceutical companies. In those companies, we're accelerating drug and vaccine discovery, precision medicine. We also have customers that are training algorithms to detect anomalies in medical images whether that's cancerous cells or Alzheimer's through the images of the eye. In the media and entertainment space, we have some extremely um, large uh, broadcast partners. We're also very widely deployed in post-production. So think special effects, rendering, 
a lot of the content that you see on uh, in films and movies and, and adverts. Um, Weka is the data storage that's feeding the artists and uh, that are where the data storage that is feeding the data in while they, they render um, the frames to produce produce that content. We're also doing very well in gaming. So some of the largest gaming companies in the world also use Weka. In the manufacturing space, we've got um, 12 customers uh, across the globe that are doing autonomous driving. They're all on a race to level four autonomous vehicle uh, level. So that, that's extremely exciting. We've also got customers doing traditional um, computational fluid dynamics, structural analysis, crash analysis, all, all the typical um, HPC workloads you would expect to see there. And then we've also got customers that are training algorithms to detect anomalies and components before they leave their factory. Um, and then we're starting to see a lot of demand in the areas like robotics, generative design, digital twins, etc. In the public space, we've had a lot of success in academia. So some of our customers are the University of Surrey, um, Chalmers University in Sweden, uh, University of Lausanne, um, we've done extremely well in, in academia across the globe. Most of our deployments in academia are either for mixed use HPC, um, and we do see a lot of geo da geospatial data use cases in those environments. And we're also starting to see a lot of AI and machine learning being deployed in the academic space. So a good example of that for us is the University of Surrey, uh, People's Centre for AI, they have a very large GPU cluster doing lots of mixed use uh, machine learning uh, jobs and they use Weka to keep that GPU cluster very busy with data. Um, we're also in some very large national labs. Um, there's a very nice bullet point here that says astrophys astrophysics stroke planetary defense. One of our customers is the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center. Um, they have a partnership with the Vera C. Rubin Observatory in South America. At that observatory, um, they're working on a project called the Legacy Survey of Space and Time. And that project is basically looking out into the universe. Um, and part of it is looking to detect any potential meteorites that might And then in the energy space, um, we're working with many companies, including the largest oil and gas company um, on seismic processing, reservoir simulation. We're starting to see a lot of AI there as well um, for things like fault detection. So looking at the structures of rigs and pipelines to try and detect any, any anomalies. Um, there's a few parallels across all these different use cases and verticals. All of them are processing large amounts of unstructured data. All of them are using compute clusters to process that data. Um, pretty much all of them these days are applying some form of compute accelerator in the pipeline. So whether that's a GPU or an IP, IPU or a wafer scale engine. Um, and those com accelerated compute clients are using high speed networks. So um, Weka is has the ability to saturate multiple high speed network links into your, your accelerated compute clients. So as you invest in accelerated compute, as you look to have a huge leap in application performance, you need a data storage solution that can provide data quickly enough into those accelerated compute clients. And that's exactly um, where Weka has its most value. So let me switch to talk a little bit about the, the actual technology. Um, if you forgive the, the Lenovo badge on this slide, it's a legacy from another presentation. We can actually be deployed on lots of different um, server vendors infrastructure, including Lenovo, who's a good partner of Weka. Um, this is a look at um, how Weka is actually formed under the covers. So when you think of a network attached data storage solution, traditionally you would think of, you know, a, a, a JBOD, um, with, with LUN set up on it, you would think of controllers, you would maybe have uh, controllers for RAID, for data protection, for managing your storage system. You would maybe have some metadata servers, 
and um, maybe some object storage servers, you know, a collection of infrastructure components with various pieces of software that are pieced together to provide a, a fast network attached storage solution. Weka is very different. Weka is completely software defined and our software is deployed in containers. And this slide just illustrates what those containers look like. So the container on the right here, the purple container, uh, Weka is deployed in just a standard LXE container. The one on the right here represents our software running on your compute client. So this isn't the storage system. This is your compute client. We have our own POSIX client interface that would reside in a container on your compute client, and it basically um, sits in user space in the VFS layer and avoids the kernel for IO operations, leveraging an Intel library called DPDK to communicate directly over the network to the Weka storage cluster. It's fully POSIX compliant. There's no need to change your applications to be able to use it. So all of your uh, geospatial data applications that run on Linux will be able to leverage the Weka POSIX client interface without any changes to those applications. We don't really care about what kind of um, common HPC IO tools that you're leveraging. So whether you're leveraging MPI IO for your parallel jobs, whether you're leveraging HDF5 format or NetCDF, Weka doesn't really care about that. We perform and scale extremely well with all the common tools you would find that are related to IO in an HPC software stack. So this is our POSIX client interface container on the right hand side. On the left hand side here, this is the container or containers that we would add onto the storage server, the storage host. And we've got three services that we run in that container. We've got a front end uh, client access service that manages the IO calls from the APIs that you can use for network attached storage. So we support our own data via NFS, S3, SMB. We support NVIDIA GPU direct storage as well. So you can all use all these different APIs to communicate directly over the network to your the data on your Weka storage cluster. We have a compute service. That compute service is managing data placement on the storage cluster. It's managing data protection. It manages the, the metadata for the storage system. It will manage tiering to a secondary storage tier if you want to apply that in Weka, and I'll explain that on, on the next slide. And then we have a drive service that we run. We don't need any underlying file system technology to sit under Weka. Some other parallel file systems run on top of ext4 or zfs and then they layer their services on top weka doesn't need that we have our own uh, drive agents these manage and optimize the data placement onto the nvme drives in your weka storage cluster um okay so that's a look at how weka is deployed again the idea of this slide is to help you to think that OK, the way I thought about storage systems in the past is no longer applicable. Weka is software defined. It will run on an industry standard infrastructure. It will run on servers from Lenovo, who have got some free advertising on this slide, Dell, HPE, Supermicro, um, industry standard servers. And from those, you can build a very fast Weka storage cluster. Let me show you how Weka is typically deployed in a production environment. So you would start with a bunch of NVMe servers um, or cloud instances. These could be instances in AWS, GCP, Azure or Oracle Cloud. You start with a bunch, with bunch of NVMe servers or instances and we come along and we add the Weka software in the containers that I showed on the previous slide. The Weka software will create from these NVMe servers a very fast network attached storage system that presents itself over the network to your compute clients and applications as a single storage system, what we call a single namespace. Your clients and applications would typically leverage the Weka POSIX client for lightning fast access to data on the Weka storage cluster. Again, our POSIX client interface sits in a container on your compute client beside your applications. 
Um, it's lightning fast. It sits in user space. It leverages the Intel library DPDK to avoid the kernel for I.O. operations and communicate directly over the network. Um, we did some testing with an accelerated compute client that had eight GPUs and we used eight 200 gig network ports from that client for I.O. And we showed 162 gigabytes per second of throughput and over 2 million IOPS delivered to that client over a single mount point to the Weka storage system. So the key message here is if you're investing in accelerated compute, which these days comes with multiple high speed network ports to the storage, rest assured that Weka can saturate those networks and keep your GPUs as busy as possible with data. And based on these numbers, busier than any other data storage system can keep them. The other nice thing about Weka is that all IOs are sub millisecond. So even though you're reading and writing data over the network, one meg IOs are sub millisecond, 4K IOs are 100 to 200 microseconds. What this means is that because our latency is so good, you don't need to copy data from your storage system into your compute nodes before you can start your jobs. You can read and write data directly um, during your jobs um, over the network to the Weka storage cluster at extremely high speed and extremely low latency. So we remove the need to copy data into your compute clients before you have to kick off those jobs. You can read and write directly from Weka. So we're removing data copies. We're removing infrastructure that you don't need to, to have because you're no longer holding multiple copies of the data when you, when you don't have to with Weka. What we're actually doing with your files is we're taking your files, we're splitting them up into smaller shards, and we're distributing those shards across multiple network links, across multiple servers and multiple NVMe devices within those servers. We're doing this all at, at the 4K level. If you think about it, 4K I.O. size is perfect for network transfer, perfect for reading and writing to NVMe. We've got our own optimized software stack for the network as well. We're doing everything we can here to optimize performance of data transfer over the network onto the NVMe drives. We also have some, um, some smart technology running inside the Weka storage cluster that's looking at the queue depth of each NVMe drive. So we're looking at how busy each NVMe drive is, and we're targeting new writes to the drives that are least busy. So there's lots of stuff going on here to make sure that we are running your IO operations as quickly as possible. Once your data is on your Weka storage cluster, we're protecting it with our erasure coding algorithms. So our erasure coding algorithms will protect your data at plus two, plus three or plus four parity. So your data when it's on your Weka cluster is fully protected. This is a fully resilient storage cluster. We're running um, quorums to protect all the services that are running in the storage cluster, and it's you know highly available as well. We're also doing something very different with metadata. So on each of these NVMe servers, we're running thousands of what we call virtual metadata servers. Each one of these virtual metadata servers is responsible for managing the metadata workload of a tiny portion of the capacity of your storage cluster. But none of them are tied to the structure of your namespace. What that means is that they're not tied to any particular file system or directory or subdirectory. You can have billions and billions of files in a single flat directory on your Weka cluster and still get fantastic metadata performance. You can do things with Weka that you can't do with other parallel file systems. There's certain commands like LS commands. There's certain application workloads that are small file metadata intensive that you wouldn't dream of putting on a traditional parallel file system. With Weka, we've completely removed all of those worries. We can handle small files with ease. We can handle metadata intensive workloads with ease. We can handle low latency workload requirements with ease. And also, if you have very large files, then we can handle those easily as well. We can handle up to four petabyte single file sizes. And a, a large file for us is just split into smaller shards 
and distributed across lots of it, network links, lots of NVMe devices. So we're distributing and taking advantage of all the underlying performance and capacity that's available from the Weka storage cluster. We've completely removed the metadata bottlenecks that you get in network attached storage systems, allowing you to not really worry about what, what data you're putting where. You don't have to tune for performance. Today, you might have some application IO workloads that are pretty easy. In the future, they might change dramatically as you, you know, your applications change, your, you maybe start to look at machine learning methods, the access pattern of your data changes. With Weka, if you're investing in a storage system for, for three or five years or even seven years, you don't know what your applications will look like in the future. Rest assured that with Weka, you're putting a great foundation in place to handle your I.O. requirements of today and of tomorrow. Now, I'm showing just one compute client here, but our customers generally have tens, hundreds, even thousands of compute clients. It doesn't matter to us if they are bare metal Linux, if they are containerized with Docker, Kubernetes, if they're virtualized with OpenStack or VMware. In all cases, you can use our POSIX client interface for lightning fast access over the network to the data on the Wicker storage cluster. We also support NFS, SMB, and S3 access to the same data in the same storage cluster. So if you want to ingest data via S3 or maybe ingest data from um, some laboratory equipment or field equipment via SMB, but then you want to process that data on your HPC system using POSIX, then Weka can enable you to do that without having to copy data around between different storage systems or between different volumes. You don't have to worry about that at all with Weka. So again, we're cutting down on data movement, data copies, and the amount of infrastructure that, that you require. If you want to scale your Weka storage cluster out, you can do that by adding drives, if you have any spare drive slots, or you can add one or more servers all the way up to 512 petabytes of capacity in your Weka all flash storage cluster. And you can do that while the system's online without any interruption to IOs to your clients and applications. You can also upgrade your Weka storage software online again without having to stop IO to your clients and applications. So we have non disruptive upgrades. Now, some of our customers have tens of terabytes of data. Some of our customers have hundreds of petabytes of data. And um, if they want to keep all that on an all flash storage system, then they just have what we have on the screen here. A nice all flash Weka cluster that's lightning fast, that's built out of industry standard NVMe servers. But some of our customers don't want to keep all their data on flash. When that data is no longer hot and active, they would like it to be moved onto a, a system that's based on spinning disk and has a lower dollar per terabyte cost than flash storage. So we give them the option to add a secondary data tier, which is all presented by Weka as a single system. So your clients and applications wouldn't know that there's a second tier. The, as far as they're concerned, the data is always in the same place. We can add a secondary data tier that's based on object storage which could be on-prem, it could be in the public cloud, it could be in both, and I'll explain a little bit about that. The way this works is that um, in your Weka namespace, what looks to your clients like a single Weka system, you can create up to 1,024 file systems. You can give those file systems capacity on the flash tier and capacity in an object storage tier. <clears throat> and then you would, you would attach an object storage bucket for the object storage to your capacity. You then set policies that dictate the data movement between the two tiers. So policy number one would say, OK, when a new write of data lands on the NVMe tier, and all writes always land on the NVMe tier, please wait this period of time before you make a copy of that onto the object storage tier. The second policy says, if the copy, the cache copy on the NVMe tier hasn't been touched for this period of time, just release that cached copy. And what those two policies do together is they ensure that when your data is hot and active, it's on the NVMe tier. 
when it's no longer active, it just resides down on the object tier. Object storage tiers are highly resilient. And um, we can do byte range reads from the object storage. So if you have, for example, 300 terabyte file sizes and you only want a certain byte range, we only have to go and fetch back the objects for that byte range. If we see a sequence of byte range requests from your application, we'll start to prefetch to improve performance. We can also prefetch particular data sets um, through integration with job schedulers like Slurm. So let's say you're running a large batch job um, that you know you're going to kick off at a certain point. You can work with Weka and the scheduler to prefetch that data and make sure it's on the NVMe tier before your job kicks off. We can pin data to the NVMe tier. There's all kinds of levers you can pull to make sure that when your data is hot and active, it's on the fast tier. And when it's no longer active, it's down on that highly resilient object storage tier. Again, both tiers are presented as a single shared namespace. With the object storage tier, we can scale to 14 exabytes of capacity in a single system. The really great thing about this is that this allows you to deploy a small amount of flash storage backed by a large amount of spin and disk storage with both tiers presented as one system. But that small amount of flash is a high performance window into all of your data. With the data automated, the data movement automated behind, so no one has to worry about the data movement, um, we can provide a fantastic total cost of ownership to our customers by using this two tier model. The other thing we can do is we can attach multiple object buckets to the same file systems or the same Weka storage cluster. So you can you could attach, let's say, for example, that you've got a Weka all flash storage cluster on premise and you add an object storage tier on premise as well. And you use our policies to do the tiering into the object storage and you know you work um, with that as a single system. You could attach a secondary object storage bucket to the same file system and you could push um, our snap to object bundles, which are basically bundles that you can remount for backup or disaster recovery. You can use them for async replication, cloud bursting. You could attach a, a bucket in the, in the cloud and push our snap to object bundles into that bucket. And again, you could use that for another bucket for backup or disaster recovery or cloud bursting, et cetera, et cetera. Once you have that object storage tier, You've got lots of different choices and and how many buckets you apply, where those buckets are, and what Weka services they will enable. Um, I'll give you an example of one of our customers in a couple of slides that uses a lot of these capabilities, and maybe that will present um, even even I'll add a bit more color to the picture for you. So, what I'm showing you here um, and on the previous slide is how Weka is deployed when you build a dedicated Weka storage cluster. So what I mean by a dedicated Weka storage cluster is that you've acquired NVMe servers or instances in the cloud, and those NVMe servers or cloud instances, their only job is to run the Weka software, right? They are effectively just nodes that form a storage cluster. That's all they're doing. But because Weka's software defined, we can actually be deployed in a different way. And that different way is where we put the Weka software inside the same compute system that your compute applications are running on. So if you think about your compute nodes, they're running your applications for you know, geospatial data analytics, et cetera, et cetera. We could add the Weka software onto those same compute nodes in containers, apply some resources from those compute nodes to the Weka software, and Weka can build a network attached storage cluster out of the internal drives in your compute systems. <clears throat> Let me give you a, an example of this. So if you remember the container that forms the Weka storage node has front end processes, drive processes, and compute processes, we would allocate certain cores to these processes and some memory, and then Weka would gather up all the internal drives inside those compute clients and present them over the network 
to all of your compute clients, just like a network attached storage system. So all of a sudden you've got a very fast network attached storage system that you've not had to buy any more servers for. This gives you the ability to have a really fast scratch space, shared scratch space for all your compute clients without having to go out and buy a store another storage system. And when we look at the GPU nodes that are on the market today, these come with a lot of cores, a lot of memory, a lot of network connectivity, and they are perfect for building what we call a converged Weka solution on. So I'll give you an example. One of our customers has 100 GPU nodes. Inside each of these GPU nodes, they have eight um, NVMe drives. They've added the Weka software on top, and Weka now is consuming all 800 NVMe drives, but presenting them over the network to your clients and applications as a shared network attached storage system. And you can access the data in that Weka NAS via POSIX, NFS, SMB, or S3. You can use NVIDIA GPU direct storage to get maximum IO bandwidth to your applications. And you can also use a Kubernetes CSI plugin with Weka as well. I not, don't think I've mentioned that already. Then if you wanted to integrate this into a research data lake, you could simply add an object storage behind it and you can attach object storage buckets to that Weka cluster that you've formed from your GPU nodes. And when data is not active, it will be pushed down into a highly resilient um, object storage tier. And again, both tiers are presented by Weka, just look like a big storage system to your clients and applications. You can imagine the savings that this brings to some of our customers that are transitioning into um, accelerated compute. You know, they're now able to build a lightning fast, all flash storage cluster without having to add additional infrastructure into their environment. So massive savings in terms of infrastructure acquisition, um, space, power, cooling, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, this slide is a, a bit of a presentation in itself, but what I'm going to do here is just focus on the, the blue, the light blue here that I'm trying to highlight with my mouse here. I'm not sure if that comes across in the, in the presentation. So I've talked about some of these capabilities. I'm just going to talk about a few more of them. So we, Weka has snapshots. Our snapshots are instantaneous. There's zero performance penalty. We can create clones and writable clones. Um, we also have quotas. So you can apply quotas on your Weka storage cluster at the organization level, at the file system level, and at the directory level. I've already mentioned how we tier to an S3 object storage bucket, and our snap to object feature is the feature that I mentioned that we can create bundles. Called, we call them snap to object bundles. We for sure need to create a, 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 a nicer name for those, but from those bundles, we can start to switch on backup, disaster recovery, cloud bursting. We also have at rest and in flight encryption. So um, we can also further encrypt our keys in your key management system. We are just rolling out with Weka 4.3.3 and a new data reduction feature, which will be combining both compression and deduplication. So we're very excited about that. We also have a feature called secure organizations. This is where you can create multiple organizations on the same physical Weka storage cluster. So let's say that you're the root system administrator of a Weka storage cluster. You could create an organization, appoint an administrator to that organization. They could be from a particular faculty or group or project. They might even be from a third party organization that's using your, your cluster. So you can create an organization, appoint an administrator to that organization. That administrator can then create file systems and authenticate users to access those file systems within their organization. No one else can see inside that organization. They can't see the, you know, can't see the file systems, any structure. They don't have access, not even the root system administrator. So it's a really good way of giving certain levels of multi-tenancy, and um, because multi-tenancy is a much larger topic, 
but it's a really good way of giving certain levels of multi-tenancy on the same physical worker cluster. OK, let me um, just highlight a little bit about how we, why WEC is so fast. I just want to, you know, go over this again because some of the numbers here are super impressive. So our POSIX client interface again leverages DPDK to avoid the kernel for IO operations. That's what gives us that super low latency. We support GPU direct storage, which can also massively improve the, the single client performance to your GPU accelerated compute clients. <clears throat> in fact, we showed up to 162 gigabytes per second of throughput and over 2 million IOPS to a single accelerated compute client all over a single mount point with all IOs at sub millisecond latency. Our Weka backend servers also leverage DPDK and, and SPDK to communicate directly over the network and communicate directly um, to the drives. Um, again, our client leverages DPDK, and I'll show you some performance numbers on the next slide. Combining that with the fully distributed um, scalable metadata, that allows us to basically have massively scalable metadata performance. It's fully distributed and it's completely disaggregated from the namespace structure. So it's not tied to any file system or directory and subdirectory, and it supports billions of files. And lastly, there's zero performance tuning required to unleash this, this performance. Here's a nice quote from the University of Surrey. Um, initial tests show that showed that experiments can be run eight times faster with Weka compared to local storage. So before they had Weka, they were copying data from a research data, a central research data repository into their GPU nodes. Then they were processing data with Weka. They read and write directly to Weka and they're starting to run experiments up to eight times faster. OK, I'm going to pause there for a second. I can't see if there's any questions or anything, but I'm just going to pause for a little second and see if anyone has any questions or comments. And um, if not, I'll, I'll just proceed. Any questions or comments at this stage? Uh, I, I don't see any hands for the time being. To be honest, I have a lot okay. of questions, but I will wait until the end of the presentation. So. All right, I, I hope I can answer the questions. All right, there's not, not long to go. Um, just a couple of slides and then three or four slides, and then we can stop and, and have some questions. So <clears throat> storage performance is, is a very interesting topic. So <clears throat> I saw um, an alternative storage vendor announced the other day that they had built a file system that, that could do one terabyte per second of throughput performance, which is really, really impressive. We've got multiple customers running at multiple terabytes per second, but a terabyte per second um, storage cluster is impressive performance. <clears throat> what they didn't um, convey widely was that they were using 1000 storage nodes to get that performance. So one on average, one terabyte per second, uh, sorry, one gigabyte per second from each node, which is really slow. I mean, with Weka, we are delivering like 95 gigabytes per second from a single node. So, you know, just hearing these hero numbers doesn't really mean anything if you don't know what the underlying infrastructure is. So what we did was we decided to look at performance density. And on this slide, for every petabyte of usable capacity, what kind of throughput performance could you get and what kind of IOPS performance? And we're looking at 4K random read IOPS here. And um, what kind of IOPS performance could you get comparing Weka um, to some other well-known storage vendors on the market? Now, this is a public presentation. I haven't put any names on this, um, but these are all derived from publicly available, publicly available figures that the other vendors publish and that Weka publishes. And you can see for a petabyte of usable capacity, Weka can, can deliver a significantly higher throughput and IOPS performance compared to competitive storage. And then you combine that with the fact that we don't need to tune for performance, right? So you can you can run a performance test that's using one meg IOs, and then you can run a performance test that's using 4K IOs. You don't have to tune Weka between those runs. Other vendors would tune their, their storage system to handle different IO workloads. With Weka, you don't even need to think about it. The other 
way that we accelerate um, data storage pipelines is through removing copies. Now, on the left hand side here, when I first saw this slide, I, I thought to myself, surely no one has a, has a storage environment like this. But you would be surprised how many organizations, their data storage environment isn't, it isn't installed in day one, the whole pipeline. It actually grows organically over time. And what happens is that, you know, this is an example of data being ingested by an autonomous vehicle. You know, it lands in a in a you know a large network attached storage system that might be file or object. <clears throat> you would copy that into um, HPC scratch storage while you're processing it. If it's lots of small files, that will probably be copied into the internal drives of the cluster before you process. You probably want to have a DR copy of your your raw data, you know, um, for resiliency. And then from there, you're probably pushing it into long term data lake. You're probably backing up to tape for um, either backup purposes or even maybe even a long term archive of very cold data. So what ends up happening is you have a data storage environment that has lots and lots of data copies and lots and lots of movement of data. So this takes time, costs money, and um, has a huge impact on sustainability as well, right? Because power and cooling requirements go through the roof. With Weka, our proposal is that you can have a single data storage system with an NVMe tier backed by a highly resilient object tier that you can access data via multiple protocols to this access to the same data and leverage the resiliency of an object store um, either on prem or in the cloud or a combination of both to also back up and provide disaster recovery for that data. <clears throat> We're completely removing the need to copy data and re reducing the amount of infrastructure requirements and you know the time it takes to move data. This is an example of one of our customers in the UK. So it's a very large life sciences research uh, customer of Weka. They have in data center one eight petabytes of Weka flash tier. From there, they're tiering into 100 petabytes of object store. The object storage tier is actually located across three sites and it uses geo-distributed erasure coding to protect the data. <clears throat> so it's an 11 plus seven data protection stripe. They can lose a full data center and the data and still have access to the data. They actually have a small Weka NVMe cluster at location two. It doesn't have to be the same size as the primary one, and they can remount any of the file systems that use our snap to object feature from this um, secondary cluster. And they do that for disaster recovery, business continuity. They also use it for some test dev purposes as well. They also have um, multiple direct connect links into AWS. And they are using AWS for a few th different things um, when it comes to Weka. One of those is that they have clients in AWS that are mounting the on-prem Weka storage system. The other is that they are actually taking um, older file systems and pushing them into AWS and then pushing them down the AWS S3 tiers into Glacier. So they're parking their cold file systems and into a very inexpensive tier off-prem in, in AWS. So this starts to show you the capabilities once you start using the various Weka features of how you can have um, very high performance to your applications, um, an object storage tier that's massively resilient. I think this has got like 16 nines durability that has fully integrated backup and disaster recovery without having to copy data. And then you've also got the flexibility of integration into the public cloud. We're doing things at huge scale with massive savings and huge savings, not just in cost, but also in sustainability. The whole premise here is one platform that does it all. It's a single point of management. We're not having to copy your data. We can handle all of your data pipeline from lots of different protocols, lots of different IO performance requirements, and it can be on prem or the public cloud. And lastly, don't just take my word for it. Weka, this is a slightly older slide. We're up to 85 reviews now. Um, customers can review their technology partners and their products at Gartner Peer Insights. 
Um, Weka is the top rated distributed file system at Gartner Peer Insights based on 85 verified customer reviews. If you go and look at those reviews, we've got on average 4.9 out of 5 for our product reviews and 5 out of 5 stars for our support in every single review. We're extremely proud of how we support our customers. Our support team is fantastic. And you can see some of the nice quotes that we've got from our customers on this slide. OK, I took a little bit longer than I expected there, but um, that was all I had for you today. I hope you found it useful and I'll, I'll stop sharing just now and see if we've got any questions or, or comments at this stage. OK, thank you very much, Derek, for this very detailed uh, presentation about Weka. So I think all of us now have, have a, a clear understanding about the capabilities and how, how also the platform works internally. Yeah. Uh, so um, I want to invite the participants to pose their questions. If they want, they can use the chat or they can raise the hand and then also ask the questions live. And there is already one question actually in the chat. Uh, Mukund asks, uh, are there any specific algorithms or machine learning models that are particularly well suited for analyzing geospatial data within the Weka data platform? Yeah, I mean, our customers are using a, a fairly broad gamut of, of machine learning processing frameworks. Um, you know, for, for us, as long as Weka, at its core, Weka is a POSIX compliant um, storage system, and we've got a POSIX compliant client interface. Um, so you do not need to change any of your machine machine learning um, processing frameworks to use Weka. So, I mean, name your favorite um, processing framework um, from PyTorch to Cafe and, uh, you know, they work out of the box with Weka and they work e extremely well. So whether, you know, a lot of our customers are running very large models and um, they are they a lot of them start off with models on a single GPU and then they go to multiple GPUs in a single client and then they start running very large models across multiple GPUs across multiple clients, which is um, you know, a bit more complex. Weka works very well, you know, regardless of the model size and how many GPUs that they're running across um in parallel. We also don't really care about whether it's um, the I.O. pattern is lots of small files, lots of large files, <clears throat> lots of concurrent processes reading and writing into the same file. We, we just don't we don't really care and um, we'll provide good performance for all of those. So in summary, don't, don't worry as long as there are Linux applications, they will be POSIX compliant and they will be able to use Weka. OK, thank you. Um, I want to pose a question. But first, uh, we got another one from 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 Aditya. Uh, so, uh, from your presentation, in case of distributed processing, it seems that Weka encourage and support movement of execution closer to the data to reduce the data copy. However, some of on-premise infrastructure already divide the storage server with processing cluster. So, how Weka handle this situation efficiently? I'm not quite getting it. The question, let me, sorry, I'll open the chat as well. And sure, yeah, it's already there. So it's going to encourage this support movement. Aditya, you can also ask directly if you wish. OK, uh, can you hear my voice? Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 OK, uh, thank you, Dad, for your uh, presentation. Actually, my question is Are that uh, some of the uh, distributed processing frameworks actually encourage the movement of the execution closer to the data instead of moving the data uh, close to the uh, execution uh, node yeah. or execution machine. Uh, yeah. I also see that Weka also encourages and support this kind of uh, processing. But sometimes the uh, situation is that on the on-premise infrastructure, uh, the organization already divide between the uh, storage server dedicated storage server and dedicated processing cluster. Uh, in case of using the Weka, how can Weka uh, uh, handle that situation efficiently? I mean, to reduce the, 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 the data copy across the processing cluster. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure I'm still understanding the question. I think the question <laughs> is that 
at the application level, basically the, the data has already been divided and carved up across multiple processes um, and and read and written and you know distributed already across the storage cluster. Is that, mm -hmm. is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. yes and yes, and, how, and how, how does Weka manage that? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so um, basically um, most of our um, work is done with applications that are running in parallel um, leveraging highly distributed data. So I don't know what particular um, file formats you're, you're looking at or you know what particular um, distributed um, IO tools you're thinking about, maybe things like MPI, IO, et cetera. We've not come across um, any common tools in an HPC environment that's caused us any issues at all. If you've got applications where you're particularly concerned, it would be really interesting if you could share with me the file format and any, you know, any of the tools they're using for for that distributed processing, or even give me the application name and we can we can go and run it and test it for you. But I would be very surprised if it poses a, a problem for Weka. Um, with regards to with regards to latency, um, I mentioned that we are reading and writing data over the network at sub millisecond. I mean. The, the time it takes to to pass data over a high performance network is a tiny fraction of the time it takes to do a read and write operation on an SSD. So that data transfer over the network is is like the time is completely neg negligible. So um, you know we we don't really worry about data locality in the same way that you know we did when when people were using 10 gig or one gig networks, transferring data over a 100 gig network or, or, or above is so quick that data locality is no longer an issue. <clears throat> if you're using something like Weka, you know that's got, got a completely optimized network stack. I'm not sure I, I did a good job of answering that, but I, I did my best. So. <laughs> Okay, well, well, I, I catch your idea. Thank you, Derek. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks for the question, Aditya. Uh, so I want to pose a question. So eventually, uh, the examples you gave, Derek, uh, were quite impressive. So actually, uh, quite high-end uh, infrastructure and uh, quite large volumes yeah. of storage. Uh, but uh, it might be possible that uh, parties who, who have small size in infrastructure would be also interested still to get the best performance out of the, the their existing in infrastructure so i wonder if there is a kind of minimum uh, data volume size after which yeah. becca uh, becomes a feasible solution or uh, what do you what do you say yeah. about this yeah that's a really good question because we uh, and I'm, i apologize for that we tend to tend to show off a little bit with our largest customers most of our customers are significantly smaller than than that right we've got hundreds of customers worldwide and we've got customers that that are starting as small as 50 to 100 terabytes of of capacity i would say if you're going to invest in a in a network attached storage system then that's probably a good starting point for weka around about the 50 to 100 terabyte um size because you've got to invest in you know the the networking and the <clears throat> you may already have enough ports and stuff like that but you, you know, for all intents and purposes, you've got to invest in NVMe devices, servers, and networking to, to build a cluster. So it only really makes sense once you've got 50, 100 terabytes and, and above. Okay. So actually, in fact, it's also suitable for small scale uh, and enterprises or like academic institutions. We, uh, we yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Thank Thanks for asking that. I should have highlighted that, you know, we've got a lot of customers with tens of terabytes of data. As well as a, a handful of customers that are in the, you know, the hundreds of petabytes. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, my understanding, in fact, uh, the technology is optimized for uh, NVMEs, uh, but uh, can it work also uh, nicely if somebody would be interested to to test it with uh, spinning drives? Or you don't suggest something yeah. like this at all? No. So, um, 
I mean, potentially it would work, but you're not really going to get the benefits of Weka because um, so we, we've built and designed our software stack for, for NVMe. So, <clears throat> I mean, if you wanted to use SAS flash drives, for example, then then it would probably work, but but it's not something that's going to get the highest levels of performance because <clears throat> our software stacks designed for NVMe. And similarly with spin and disk, you know, you're not going to get the levels of performance or anywhere near that. Um, so so we just wouldn't recommend um, um, doing that. So, uh, I, you know, there's certain workloads that spin and disk are is still good for. But what we see is that most modern workloads require either an all flash system or certainly a flash here. Um, where the hot data resides these days, because spin and disk is getting more and more um, capacity on a single drive, but the performance isn't necessarily going up. So through a file through a file system, you're only going to get, let's say, 150 megabytes per second from from a spin and disk. And um, through a file system, you're going to get, let's say, up to five gigabytes per second, maybe even more with PCIe Gen 5 on a on an NVMe device. So, you know, per per gigabyte or per terabyte of data spinning disk is getting slower and slower over time. So for that that high performance layer to your applications, flash has become it's pretty hard to ignore having a flash tier these days. Okay. Um in, in your size also you, you you briefly mentioned the number of cores uh, um per, per disk. Yeah, uh, as the requirements, but you didn't mention any memory requirements uh, for for the nodes. So, do you have a kind of yeah. in-memory caching mechanism uh, that requires a certain amount of memory, or uh, what's the situation regarding yeah. to that? Yeah, so the the client would require a few megabytes of memory. Um, I can't remember the exact figure, but the client. So our POSIX client running on your compute client would require a few megabytes of of memory. On the the storage server side, um, we're probably looking at anywhere from two hundred and fifty six megabytes um, to five hundred. Sorry, two hundred and fifty six gigabytes to um, five hundred and twelve gigabytes of RAM. Okay. Yeah, that's to you know there's different services where we're using to run the storage cluster, so we look for look for a, a fairly high chunk of RAM. OK, great. Um, we are slightly over time, but I want to ask two questions before finishing, Derek, if you if you if you, if you, sure. if you accept. So um, the first one is, is there a way to test Veka? So uh, can it be possible to have a yeah. kind of hands on uh, experience? Yeah, with Veka? yeah, there are several things we can do. So um, so we can I mean, we can run a run a demo and and give you a look under the covers and you know run through the user interface and and all, all that storage cluster to to do some testing we can also provide uh, uh, demo licenses if you want to do some on-premise testing. And finally, the, we have the option to build a Weka cluster in the public cloud and a couple of clients. And, you know, we can build it in your cloud environment or our cloud environment, and you can you can play around with it there. So there's a lot of different options in how to test Weka. Okay, that's great. I think our faculty will be very much interested in testing it, but uh, we have also some uh, participants from our central uh, ICT uh, department, so probably um, we will co contact you about it. Um, last Great. question is about your business model, uh, Derek. So uh, basically, uh, you have a licensing mechanism in place, my understanding. So can you provide a little bit of yeah. information about how it works? Yeah, sure. So the license is subscription based um, and it's it's licensed per usable terabyte. So typically um, our on premise customers would acquire, let's say you acquire a Weka storage system with 500 terabytes of capacity, then 
you know, you would buy a Weka license for 500 terabytes and you would buy it generally for the same length of time as your hardware support. So usually when you buy storage server nodes, you would buy them with three or five years hardware support. So you would typically buy the Weka license and align it to the, the same time period. So it's subscription based for the period of time that you want to use it based on usable terabytes. OK, OK, good. Well, thank you very much uh, for this very nice presentation uh, about the Wake Up platform. Thank you. The numbers of amazing. So uh, yeah. we wish we, we 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 could have access to such an infrastructure. I'm sure it speed up all the scientific yeah. work research a lot. And hopefully maybe we will have uh, the chance. So uh, looking forward uh, for further collaboration. And thanks for your time thank and you. availability for, yeah. for, for this nice talk. Yeah, thank you so much for set, setting up the talk. I really appreciate the opportunity and thank you to everyone who joined as well. I really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.